my name is Amber Edwards. I am your Utah Concealed Firearm Instructor. Now, right, the reason for this video is just so we can go over the course outline before actually taking the Utah Concealed Carry course in person. Now, we're just gonna go over some key factors. It is gonna be your responsibility to get a piece of paper or print out the PowerPoint so you can follow along with me. This is gonna be super simple and easy, so just follow along. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to just write down on a piece of paper what the question is or the concern, and then we can talk about it during the concealed carry course. Now, after that, we do have to talk about the Utah law. Now, remember that this is the Utah concealed carry course, so if you plan on traveling, it's your responsibility to know that state's laws and regulations on a Utah permit holder. That's gonna be your responsibility. Now from there, we're gonna talk about your permit, how your permit is actually a privilege, and then also we're gonna get into how, how to deal with law enforcement, how not to wear a badge while you're a permit holder. We're gonna talk about open carry versus concealed carry, and then also our Second Amendment right for open carry, and then we will get into places you can and cannot go in the state of Utah. Now, after that segment, we will get into the justification of force. Now, this is the legal review. The legal review is gonna talk about where you can and cannot defend yourself, your family, or if you are able to, if there is a forcible felony against you or a third person, what you would be able to do in the state of Utah. Now, from that being said, um, there's going to be a lot of if, ands, and buts, a lot of scenarios, a lot of gray areas. And then also, this is just going to come down to how you feel. If you feel like your life is being threatened, because it could be different to another person. So again, this is just for you, your personal preference. Everything to do with this course is going to be hands down your personal preference. Now, everything to do with concealed carry is gonna be on you. You have to feel comfortable with the firearm that you choose. You will have to feel comfortable concealed carrying that, carrying that firearm on your person or firearms on your person comfortably with the holster that you choose. You will be responsible for it. You're gonna be responsible to know what location you're traveling into or going into and then traveling into different states. We will talk about airports and airlines and then some places that you cannot carry as far as just kind of what I was concerned about, we will talk about that. Now, I have been teaching concealed carry courses for about six years now. I used to work for the Bureau of Criminal Identification for six years, and that was actually processing the concealed carry permit applications. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about BCI, feel free to contact me or let me know, and I'll be willing and glad to help you with those, those um, questions about BCI. Now, once we meet up for our concealed carry course, this is gonna be your responsibility to brush up on everything that we just talked about during this course. You are gonna make sure that you can actually pass a quiz. If you don't pass that quiz, then I honestly don't have to sign your application. This is gonna be your responsibility. With concealed carry, it is a privilege. So if you don't follow some simple rules and even Utah law, it can be taken from you just like your driver's license. It's pretty simple. But I am proud of you guys for wanting to obtain the Utah concealed carry permit. Now, some people obtain the Utah concealed carry permit for just traveling purposes. So now you do have to get the background check done, but it actually waives the background check fee when purchasing firearms. Right? Pretty neat. <laughs> so it does save you time and money when purchasing firearms. Now, that is just basically your course outline. So let's just kind of get into the nitty gritty of the concealed carry course. In the email that I provided for you, there, print it out, write notes, or even just simply grab a piece of paper and write these key, point down, key points down. So safety. What are our four firearm safety rules? I'm waiting for you to answer. <laughs> Our four firearm safety rules. When it comes to a firearm, you always want to treat a firearm as it's loaded, always. Every single time you pick up this firearm, you treat it like it is a loaded firearm. Now, with that being said, never point a firearm at anything you're not willing to destroy. Now, before the decision to fire, make sure you know your target, 
target's environment, and any other safety hazards, and then also what's beyond your target. Now, with that being said, what's beyond your target? How come a permit holder has to be worried about that? Why, do, why does a permit holder have to be worried about what's beyond your target? If you're saying bystanders, you're probably right. Even if you are on target, you could potentially miss. Who's gonna be liable for that? You will be. Now, treat all firearms if they are loaded. Always keep your finger off the trigger until you are ready to fire, okay? With this being said, what it's super simple is you make a gun with your hand and then you take the gun just like this. This makes it so your finger is automatically off that trigger, okay? So make a gun, take the gun. Pretty simple, right? Now you can try it as well. Keep doing that for muscle memory. That will help you, especially if you have inside the waistband and you go to unholster and your finger's already on that trigger, you could potentially shoot yourself or somebody around you. So make sure you have that safety precaution down, okay? Now, never point a fireman anything you're not willing to destroy. Before the decision to fire, be sure of your target, target's environment, any other safety hazards. We kind of got on, gone over that, okay? Now, be a knowledgeable gun handler and user. Know how to use your firearm safely. Use the correct ammunition for your firearm. Wear ear and eye protection when you go shooting. Carry only one type of ammunition with you. This is so you don't mix types as far as practice rounds versus self-defense rounds. You wanna stay consistent, okay? So if you're mixing practice rounds with self-defense rounds in your magazine or in your cylinder, that's probably something that you shouldn't do because you need the accuracy and the reliability beyond it, behind it, okay? So what I suggest is if you have concealed carry firearm, if you have a concealed carry firearm, you make sure that you are carrying self-defense rounds. Now, is it illegal to carry practice rounds while you're a permit holder? No, it's not. One thing though, that it's not smart because you're gonna be reliable for that bullet. Okay, you could have over penetration, which means that bullet is gonna go straight through that person that you're trying to stop from attacking you, but simply it goes through that person and it keeps going. You're gonna be reliable for that. That's why you want to look for hollow points so it has that stopping power behind it, okay? Now, when you first purchase your firearm, I want you to put at least 50 to 100 rounds through it to ensure that it's working correctly. Now, if you get malfunctions with the 50 to 100 rounds, maybe you should take it to a weapons dealer and see what's going on, or it's simply just the ammunition that you're using, okay? Now, it's gonna be your responsibility to make sure that it actually works and ensures your safety if you were to use it for self-defense. Now, the primary causes for firearm-related accidents is ignorance and careless. Don't be an ignorant or careless person because that is gonna lead to either you getting hurt or somebody else getting injured. And we do not want that. So as a permit holder, just make sure you always have it holstered, you're being safe about it, and being smart with your concealed carry practices. Never use alcohol and drugs when you have your firearm with you. If you are over the 0.05 blood alcohol content in the state of Utah, you are now a restricted person. So if you do go to the bar and you have a few drinks and you're over the 0.05, you're technically a restricted person in the state of Utah. So make sure you know, make sure you think before you go to the bar or to go have some beverages with the friends. <laughs> okay, with that being said, controlled substance is the same thing as a restricted person. If you're prescribed a medication, you should be fine. But if you're abusing that prescription or if the prescription is not for you, you would be a restricted person. So just make sure you are aware of that. Now, store all firearms that are not accessible to children or unauthorized people. Who would be an unauthorized person to touch your firearms? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> now, if you said anybody, right, that's true. Nobody should be able to touch your firearms. And also, if you did not give them the authority to touch your firearms, then they're gonna be restricted, right? So this is why we want to lock up our firearms. Safety, to ensure that your firearms is, are secured safely so little hands don't get to them. Now, 
With firearms being stored, it is recommended that firearms and ammunition be stored separately. Now, if you have a loaded firearm in your home, you can do that in the state of Utah, as long as you're not a restricted person, okay? So, you can have a loaded firearm in your home, or firearms in your home. Also, your vehicle is an extension to your habitation. Yes, you heard me right. <laughs> you can have a loaded firearm in your vehicle. Now, unless you're a restricted person, right? But if you're all trying to obtain the Utah concealed carry permit, well, you're probably not going to be a restricted person. But here's the thing. If you get into your vehicle, you can fully load your firearm. Now, once you step out of your vehicle and you're not a permit holder yet, you do have to have that firearm statutorily unloaded, open carried on your person when you're not a permit holder. Now, your permit will show up in the mail in two months from taking the course. Once you receive your permit in the mail, you can lawfully conceal carry fully loaded in the state of Utah. So if you have your firearm fully loaded in your vehicle and you step out of your vehicle, that's completely fine if you have it fully loaded. If you want to open carry fully loaded as a perma holder, you can. There's no state law or state statute that restricts you, but remember you're issued the concealed carry permit, so you might as well just conceal carry. Plain and simple, right? Let's move on. Some more safety rules that you have to consider. Children. Now, even if you don't have children, if you have anybody else living in your home, you need to be responsible for teaching them about firearm safety. Children need to be taught what to do when they come across a firearm, which is stop, don't touch, leave the area, and tell a trusted adult. Now, with that being said, children need to be taught the difference between television, toys, and real life. This is gonna be your responsibility, okay? Now, this goes for anybody in your home. Everybody in your home needs to learn about firearm safety. What happens if they come across the firearm and they're not sure how to handle it safely? That could cause you or other people in your home be injured. So make sure that you teach them about firearm safety. Let's talk about the handgun parts and operation. Right now, I'm gonna get out my semi-automatic Glock 43. This is my personal carry firearm. Okay, so this right here is just my Glock 43. Um, it's a single stack, which means the ammunition is just in a single file line, okay? Double stack is where it's staggered, where it looks like it's doubled, okay? So, right here is your slide. Here's your barrel. Here's your front sight and your rear sight. This is your ejection port, which comes out of the magazine well, right here. Right here are my grips my back strap. Right here's my trigger guard covering my trigger. Now, here's my takedown levers. It's on both sides of this firearm, if you can see that. Then also here's the magazine release. This is what releases my magazine. This is basically the components of your semi-automatic. Now, it is your responsibility to know what type of firearm that you have, because there's gonna be a little different parts and operation to the firearm that you may have versus mine in my hand. Now, this one does not have a safety. Your safety could be up over here. If you lift it up and you pull the trigger, most likely nothing will happen. Before you pull the trigger, you wanna make sure that there's nothing sitting into this chamber. And then you can properly pull that trigger. Now, right here, most likely, will be your safety. Right here is gonna be your slide lock. And then also the one maybe forward from your slide lock could be your takedown lever. Notice how this does not have a hammer. Yours could have a hammer or hammerless. This is your responsibility to know. With the revolver, I don't have, I don't actually have a revolver to show you right now, but with the revolver, instead of a magazine, you will have a cylinder, okay? Now that means when you want to load your revolver, you have to pop out the cylinder and load them each time, one by one, or get a speed loader for your revolver. Now, those and moving parts, all of that, okay? So that's gonna be your responsibility. Now, if you're contemplating whether or not to get the semi-automatic versus a revolver, here's just a little list for you. The semi-automatic holds more ammunition than revolvers. It's simple to operate, okay? Also, People find that it points more natural, especially if they're under stress. 
Now, just so you realize, you could get malfunctions with your semi-automatic, so keep that in mind. With your revolver, it's simple to operate. It's easy to determine whether it's loaded or not, and people with limited hand movements, such as arthritis, love the revolver because it is simple. If you get a malfunction with your revolver, all you would have to do is pull the trigger for the cylinder to rotate, then there's a new round ready for you to go. So that's always an option for you. Single firearm is gonna be a little bit different than the one that you just shot. So at least test three, so at least try three firearms that you would wanna try and then just move around in the variety of maybe make or model. Maybe try a different caliber. Okay, find one that you feel comfortable with. Okay, now we could have malfunctions with your semi-automatics, okay? We have a stovepipe malfunction, a double feed, magazine not fully seated, we have a misfire and a hang fire, and then also you could potentially get a squib load. A squib load is due to reloaded ammunition, and reloaded ammunition should not be carried, okay? Our stovepipe is going to be where you pull the trigger, and the cartridge gets, tries to eject out of the ejection port, but it gets caught in the slide and the ejection port. So it looks like a chimney pipe, kind of like this, okay? Now, if you were trying to, to defend yourself, all you would have to do with this is rack that slide back, that should fall out, and then we'll reload a new round into the chamber. Now, if you're moving your slide like this, you're simply ejecting rounds out or you could potentially cause a double feed. A double feed is where there is one chambered and another round is seated directly up underneath it, so there's a jam. If that ever happens to you, you do have to drop your magazine, rack your slide back, those rounds should fall out, then you grab your magazine, put it in the magazine well, rack your slide, and then you're loaded, ready to go, okay? Now, a hang fire is a delay. It is hanging on and then it fires, hang fire. Now we have a misfire when you pull the trigger and it just misses to fire. So, say we're up here, okay? I have my firing stance, I'm ready. I go down to the trigger, I make sure I'm breathing. If I pull that trigger and nothing happens, What's your first reaction? I hope that it's hold it in a safe direction for at least 30 seconds. If you pull back your firearm and that firearm potentially goes off, you could harm yourself or somebody else around you. So whenever you pull that trigger and nothing happens, hold it in a safe direction for at least 30 seconds, okay? Our squib load is where there's not enough force for the bullet to actually exit the barrel. That means reduce recoil, muzzle flash, and noise, okay? So if that ever happens to you, that means that you would have to, that means that you would have to disassemble your firearm and clean out the barrel because there is seriously a bullet stuck inside the barrel. What I recommend is taking this to a weapons dealer so they can clean it out accordingly. With your ammunition, it is based off of two things reliability and liability. You make sure, you need to make sure that you have stopping power when it comes to self-defense purposes. Reloaded ammunition should not be carried. Okay, you can practice with this, but it should not be carried because it's not reliable, right? Now, when purchasing your ammunition, it's your responsibility to find the type that fits your gun. Find the caliber that fits your gun. Now, if you don't know, take your firearm, to a Shields or a Cabela's or Doug Shooting Sports or wherever that sells firearms, talk to the firearms dealer and say, hey, I was just wondering if you could help me find the ammunition to fit, to fit, my, um, to fit my firearm. All they would do is say, okay, let's check it out. They're gonna look right here on the slide. You could even do this at home. It's gonna be posted either on the upper part of your firearm, whether on the slide or even on the barrel, okay? Now, always point your firearm in a safe direction. You never ever want to point the barrel in your face. Don't ever do that. Okay. 
Now, I hope you're still with me. I hope you're still following along. Make sure if you're writing down all your questions, comments, or concerns, so we can talk about them during the course. With your ammunition, you need to inspect ammunition for imperfections, okay? You wanna make sure you keep, um, <laughs> you wanna make sure you keep your ammunition in a cool, dry place. You wanna make sure that you're not touching your ammunition because that can cause corrosion, as in salts and chemicals that can get on them. You don't wanna do that because it will cause corrosion to the rounds. You have self-defense rounds versus practice rounds. That will be listed in the PowerPoint, so make sure you go look at those graphics. Grab a practice round versus a hollow point, just so you can see. Now, this right here is obviously a 380, okay? Just because of the size that it is, okay? Now, this right here is going to be your practice round because it does not have a hollow point to it. This is called a full metal jacket, okay? This right here is going to be your self-defense round. Here's your hollow point. So you have stopping power, accuracy, and reliability with this bad boy. This is just for fun, right? Pew, pew, let's go train, let's go practice. This is the one that you wanna do, is your practice round versus self-defense round, okay? Now, it's your responsibility or just your personal preference to choose what type of self-defense rounds that you wanna carry, okay? That's just your personal preference. Let's get into our shooting fundamentals. Now this right here, again, is gonna be up to how you feel comfortable, but I'm gonna just show you some key points of what you need to look for with your shooting fundamentals. When I say hand grip of a firearm, this is what you need to be doing. So say you have a semi-automatic. If you're right-handed, again, you're gonna make a gun, take the gun. Of course, you're gonna make sure that it's clear just so it's safe handling. Now, from there, my right hand is on my firearm and it's all the way up onto the back strap of this firearm, right? If it's down below right here, if you go to pull that trigger, you're gonna have a, a lot of muzzle flip. That's something that you do not want. So you're gonna make sure that you go snug up to the back strap. From there, the left side of my firearm is free for my left hand. What I'm gonna do is just place both thumbs and I'm gonna wrap my fingers underneath this trigger guard. From there, I have a pretty good grip, and then I'm gonna make sure that I have a firm grip of my firearm with my two hands. Make a gun, take a gun, left hand, just like this. From there, you can get your sight alignment, which is your front sight and your rear sight, combined. Then, from there, let's talk about trigger control. Trigger control. Okay, right here you wanna make sure you can control the trigger. Now, if you're going like this, dipping down, you're anticipating, you're anticipating the recoil. What you wanna do, make sure you're breathing. Breath control, inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, okay? This will help you so you can stay on target because if you stop breathing, obviously you're gonna pass out, <laughs> okay? So what you're gonna do, I've got a pretty good hand grip, okay? My stance is my right foot back just a little bit and my left foot that's bent, my left leg, which is bent a little bit so I can push into this firearm, okay? So once I can push into this firearm, I'm gonna make sure that I am breathing. Okay, here's your hand grip. I'm gonna make sure that I am breathing. Then I'm gonna find the slack in my trigger. Here's my slack. I have my front sight and my rear sight combined. And you pull the trigger. You wanna make sure that when you pull the trigger, it's gonna surprise you each time. Okay, keep doing this over and over and over again. Now, I've had a lot of coffee this morning. <laughs> but keep doing this. This will help you when you go to the shooting range so you're not afraid or intimidated by this firearm. This is a tool for you. So treat it as a tool. Learn about it. 
figure out how it feels comfortable to you, okay? Now, those are your shooting fundamentals. Hand grip, body position, breath control, side alignment, trigger control, and then follow through. Following through all these steps. Okay, you wanna make sure you have the follow through because if you don't follow through with it, you could be off target or you could hurt your wrist or you simply just have that break in that trigger where you keep dipping down or forward or up onto the right side of your target. That's anticipating the recoil. So just make sure you take a deep breath. You take your time. It's not a race. Accuracy is key. Okay, cleaning your firearm. It is recommended that you clean your firearm at least once a week. Why? Why so often? Well, it's to ensure that everything is going to be working correctly for you for your concealed carry practices. Make sure, so um, to ensure that your firearm is gonna work correctly for you. So maybe if there was debris in the slide, if it couldn't rack the slide back, if there's something stuck in the barrel, that's gonna be your responsibility. This is why we wanna break down our firearms and clean them at least once a week. And also, I recommend every time you shoot. After every single time that you shoot, you should probably break down your firearms just to ensure that it's gonna work correctly for you. Pretty simple. If you need help with that, just get out your manual for your firearm and we'll have those instructions or simply just get onto YouTube and there's so many videos of that. So just make sure that you're doing it safely. And first things first, make sure your firearm is unloaded before you start to clean it because that's where most in-home in accidents happen. As when from is from when people try to clean their firearms. They think they put it away unloaded, but really it was loaded, they pull the trigger, and they either shoot themselves or somebody in their home. So just make sure that it's you, your responsibility, to ensure that there's nothing in the chamber. Conceal carried options. It's based off of three things. Concealment, comfort, and accessibility. You wanna make sure that you're comfortable while you're concealed carrying. Then also you wanna make sure that it's concealed. Hence, conceal carry, right? Now, conceal carry means that so nobody knows that you have a firearm on you, only you, okay? So with your confidence, this is gonna go a long way. Make sure that you're confident with your firearm. Make sure that it's actually concealed, okay? Um, and then also make sure that you can access that firearm so you have the accessibility to it, okay? Some popular methods, inside the waistband, outside the waistband, pocket holsters, and then ankle holsters. Those are pretty popular, but again, this is just your personal preference. Now, when we go through the concealed carry course, I will have the application and the fingerprint card, and I will be taking your photo. So just be assured, just be aware of that, okay? I will provide that all for you. You don't have to print it out. It's just ready to go when you take my concealed carry course. Now, you must be 18 years old to have the Utah concealed carry permit. Your permit is valid for five years. Renewal is only $20. You must watch a suicide safety video. And then also payment of 20 bucks, a new photo and the application, that's it. And then it's renewed for another five years and you will get a new card in the mail with a new expiration date on it. Everything is kept private within BCI's system. So nobody can call and ask if you have a firearm. The only people that can obtain any of that information would be if you were detained by law enforcement, then they would be able to obtain that information if they choose. If you were born outside of the United States, BCI does need proof of citizenship. You can be denied your concealed carry permit. So in the event of a denial, suspension, or revocation, you can file an appeal in writing within 60 days of your denial dates. This is free, so you might as well just do the appeal process. Do not possess a badge when you have your concealed firearm permit, or just don't possess a badge at all. You're pretending to be false authority, and this is wrong. It is a class B misdemeanor if you do get caught possessing a badge. Don't pretend to be law enforcement. Plain and simple, just don't do that. Now, open carry, I've already talked about this. In the state of Utah, you can open carry statutorily unloaded, which means two away from firing. The safety does not count as a step and the hammer does not count as a step. It's literally, if you have a semi-automatic, right? Here's your semi-automatic. Your magazine is fully loaded right here. This is statutorily unloaded because you have the slide, which is one step, and the trigger, which is two from firing. If you have a six shooter revolver, it is now a four shooter revolver. Plain and simple, 
clear as mud. <laughs> Hopefully it's just plain and simple, okay? All right. Now, a valid concealed firearm permit holder can possess a firearm in a public school just like that, okay? Now, I'm not saying just to go hang out on public school grounds because that's just sketchy and weird. Don't do that, okay? Now, private property. This is huge. Private property owners may apply whatever restrictions they want. Whether or not these restrictions violate unconstitutional rights, that's for the civil courts to decide. The only statutory restrictions on us permit holders are secured areas. Secured areas are like courts, law enforcement, correctional mental health facilities, TSA checkpoint, anywhere where there's these huge metal detectors and you're getting wanted down by a metal detector, that would be considered a secured area. Anywhere else, like Target, Walmart, Walgreens, Chipotle, Mexican Grill, Chuck E. Cheese, anywhere really that's not owned by you is gonna be private property and they can have these restrictions where they don't want firearms in their premises. But again, that's just their policy, not state. I hope you understand that. If you're not 100% sure, just hurry and write that down. Say, maybe I need some more clarification on this. But if it's a secured area, it's a third degree felony. If it's private property, you're technically just trespassing. That's it. Now, the art of concealed carry is so nobody knows that you have a firearm. So say you walk into Walmart and there's a sign that says no guns, but you're concealed. You walk into Walmart, nobody knows. You get into your car. Did you break state law? No. Did you break Walmart's policy? Yeah. But would you rather get a trespassing ticket or your life taken from you? That's something that you would have to decide. Now, when stopped by law enforcement, whether this be out on the streets or while you're driving in your vehicle, it is recommended, recommended, you heard me, it is recommended that you treat law enforcement how you would want to be treated. And it's recommended that you give them your driver's license, your permit to carry card, and registration for your vehicle. Just comply with the law. That's all. That's all I have to say. <laughs> comply with the law. Now, if you just wanna say, hey, yeah, I've got a gun in here, it's over here, maybe in the passenger seat underneath it, you're more than welcome to do that. But I recommend driver's license, permit to carry card and registration right off the bat. That's gonna deescalate a situation even if there ever was one. From there, the law enforcement officer will advise you on what to do with your firearm and they will be able to ask you the questions that they need to and how they feel at the time. That's just how it is. Okay, treat law enforcement how you would want to be treated. Okay, let's talk about Utah law. So serious bodily injury, okay? Serious bodily injury means bodily injury that creates or causes serious permanent disfigurement, protracted loss or impairment of any bodily member or organ, or creates a substantial risk of death. So if someone wants to just come up and push me, I could just push him back. That's about it. Now, if he comes up and pushes me and throws me to the ground and grabs a weapon to try to intentionally kill me or create death or serious bodily injury, I would be justified to stop him by using deadly force. I hope that makes sense to you. Justification of force, this is something that we will talk about more in depth and detail during the course because it kind of is a gray area. And So with this, I just want you to hurry and review it. I want you to go through each slide. I want you to read it. I want you to think about criminal and civil liability. I want you to think of if you're just sitting in the middle of the night and someone broke into your home, what you would do. This is something that I want you to think about. Now, once you come to the course, we will talk about these issues and concerns that you have, okay? Um, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. Now, we will talk about justification of force in home, out of home, and then with your property. If you do end up using deadly force in any situation, and you are, so say you were justified, the civil matter, you can still be subject to civil liability, just so you are aware of that. You can do a citizen's arrest in the state of Utah for only a felony offense, okay? Now, just remember that you are not law enforcement, so it's not recommended that you do citizen's arrest, but if you must have to, you can arrest another individual. Not at gunpoint, but an actual restraint of the person. Only for a felony offense. Secured and prohibited areas. Airports, okay? Airport, 
secured area is TSA checkpoint. If you pass TSA checkpoint with a firearm, it could be a $3,000 fine and then $150 fine for Salt Lake. So make sure when you take your firearm to travel with, you must declare your firearm with the agent at check-in. Once you declare the firearm with the agent at check-in, make sure it's in a hard-sided container, unloaded, securely encased, and then ammunition in its original packaging away from the firearm. Once that they declare that it's a firearm, the agent will put it under the belly of the plane and then you walk through TSA checkpoint gun-free. That's basically how that works. Now realize you are traveling to a different state, airline, and airport. So these are some things that you would have to make sure that you know before you travel. Other places you cannot carry would be Indian reservations. Each tribe is self-governing and it's necessary to contact tribal leadership to obtain permission to carry. Here's your exception though. If an interstate or highway runs through the reserva reservation, you should be fine. But if you were to stop and hang out on the reservation or camp or even just to stay on the reservation, you would must obtain permission, okay? Now, national parks and national forests. You need to make sure before you go that if you're in a state that recognizes you as a permit holder, you're fine to be on a national park or a national forest. If you're in a state that does not recognize you as a permit holder, then obviously they don't recognize you, so you could not carry there. I hope that makes sense. We will talk about assault, aggravated assault, and threat of violence during the course and more in detail. We will talk about brandishing a firearm, just in case you were wondering. We will talk about that during your course. Now, if you choose to conceal carry today and you get caught, it could be a class A misdemeanor or a second degree felony. So just make sure you wait for your permit to show up in the mail before you start to conceal carry. Right now, after taking the course, you can go purchase a firearm. You can go to the shooting range. You can find the holster that you feel comfortable with. You can find the ammunition that you want to conceal carry with. What I recommend is when you find the ammunition, you at least test it in your firearm just to ensure that it's actually working correctly as far as chambering and to make sure that you can handle the recoil of the round that you just bought. Now also, you need to make sure that you feel comfortable with your holster. So before you start to conceal carry, you can always start to conceal carry in your home. As far as to make sure that you feel comfortable with it or not before you obtain your permit and you step out of your front door for your concealed carry practices. This is something that you can do before you get your permit. Just make sure if you step out of your home, it does have to be open carried and statutorily unloaded until your permit shows up. If your permit shows up and there's an error on it, on the back of your card you can flip it over and there's BCI's information as far as email, phone number, or yeah, email or phone number, <laughs> that's basically it. If there's an error, just call them, they will update it and send you a new card. Pretty simple. You have two months until you receive your permit in the mail. Two months from your concealed carry course. Everything else during this course, we will talk about when I see you. I hope you enjoyed this little course outline and preview of what to expect when you come to my concealed carry course. Thank you for choosing Badass Concealed to teach you your concealed carry practices. I really appreciate your business and please spread the word as far as concealed carry courses. Make sure you guys stay safe, make sure you're not touching your face, make sure you wash your hands, and then also just stay at home. Pretty simple, but I do look forward to meeting you for our concealed carry course. Stay safe you guys and thank you for watching and I will see you soon. Bye.